Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Teaching with Inquiry, COVID-19 edition. You're on episode 130 of the show and thank you so much for sticking with me. During these times, we're gonna be switching it up a little bit because I wanna talk about how we can go ahead and make teaching in our digital at home classrooms just a little bit easier. I want to walk you through exactly how I am using Google Slides to plan and give my students their activities for the week. And I wanted to walk you through how I do that and how I can plan an entire week's worth of simple activities that meet their needs in about two hours or less, which means that's all of the work. Now I am only planning about five hours of work for them to produce a week based on the recommendations from the government that is in charge of where I teach. So we have been given the expectation that a grade four and five students should be working for about five hours in a week. So I am giving my students a schedule on Google Slides and facilitating this through Google Classroom. And tonight I wanna walk you through exactly what that looks like and share with you my process on how I can plan and give my students digital learning activities fairly quickly and easy without needing to spend hours and hours and hours online walking them through all of that. So hopefully this video will help you to streamline some of the production that you are going to be making when teaching digitally. The first thing you're going to do is open up your Google Slides. Make sure you're in the correct username and password for what it is that you're trying to do. You're going to use Google Slides just because it's a lot easier to be moving elements around and it allows students to be interacting with a text box. So this is what I have handed out for my students this week. This is what I'm going to show you how to make. It's simply just a schedule that I've created wholly on Google Slides. This is my master copy. So I will do something a little bit with the end to not have all of these slides together. But this is what I'm going to show you how we're going to create. So you're going to go to creating a new slide. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to adjust the size and get rid of these default text boxes. So go ahead and select them all and then delete. Select file and then you're going to go to page setup on the bottom. Now here you're going to select custom and change the page so that it matches a printed page of 11 by eight and a half. Now the reason I'm doing this is it's really helpful just in case students are interested in printing the page instead of necessarily writing it online, they could choose to print it and it'll print on a regular piece of paper without a lot of help. Now I'm going to start with a title bar just because I want it to look a little visually interesting. Now I'm pretty picky, so I'm gonna use a custom color that I typically use. So I can select and enter in my special color that I wanna use. But if you're not interested in doing that, you can simply just use whatever color is there in the selection tool. Once I've selected that shape, I'm actually gonna select a text box and layer that on top of it, center it, increase the text size to something large. And then I am going to change the font because I don't want all of my fonts to look the same. So I prefer for Oswald here, so I'm gonna use that font. Just to increase the contrast, you'll notice that I'm writing in black right now and it's a lot harder to see. So I'm gonna select all of the text here and change it to white, just because that is going to increase the contrast, which is gonna make it a lot easier to see. And I'm gonna increase the font size to a 72, I believe, so that I can use this so that students can see it. Now, because I am using a little bit of color, so this might impact parents that are trying to print it. So you can choose not to, or just use black and white instead of color choices. But because I know most of my students are gonna be using this on a device, I do want them to be able to. Once I have that, I'm gonna start by adding a table, and this is going to be my weekly schedule. I'm going to select a table of five by five, and I'm actually gonna then add another column to that. So it'll end up being six by five. 
Then I'm gonna change the grid line color. To do this, I'm gonna select the pencil on the line, select black, and then in the line box, I'm going to select three point font. I'm also going to change the justification to make sure that things are centered. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the table size. Now if I notice that the bottom of the table came up, if I select all those slides and then drag the table down, it'll automatically resize just the selected table boxes so that they're all evenly spaced. Now I do wanna insert another row because I forgot initially, so I click format table and then insert a column to the left and then I can add in the subject headings here so that students can see what they're doing for each subject heading. Now although I have Monday to Friday I actually don't need my students to do each activity Monday to Friday they can work through work ahead skip a day if they need to and I make that clear in my instructions to students however a lot of my students will need to have this pretty much spelled out in terms of what it is they need to do to hold them accountable and it's just easier to show this in a Monday to Friday schedule. If I want to resize the boxes because they're out of sync, I can go to format table and then distribute rows or columns evenly and that'll adjust the size of the rows and columns to make sure that the boxes are the same size. Just visually it's a little bit easier than manually adjusting all of the boxes. Now inside each one of the boxes, I'm simply just going to add in the different expectations about what it is that I want students to do. Because we're only looking at five hours a week, you got five days, that's about an hour a day of planned instruction. So I am going to give them estimated time frames. Now what I'm gonna put here is actually a little bit more than an hour because I want them to read. So I'm just not gonna count that the reading is gonna be part of that five hours or all of the reading is gonna be part of that five hours, so I want to structure that their time is going to be set out here. So once I have my schedule completed, I have highlighted the parts in my schedule yellow that represent the places where students are going to have assessment. Now I need to start building out the pages that I want students to fill in. So I'm gonna open up a blank page and begin to build out what a, say, work page is going to look like. And I'm gonna have two separate kinds of pages, one with just like an information page with links and also other times where students will be writing in their answers right into the Google slide page. So I do wanna build in that we still have learning goals and kind of keep students and parents focused on exactly what it is that we need to work on. So I'm always on every slide going to put a title about what subject it is and use color to color code that, as well as I'm going to be posting the learning goal that aligns with what it is we're gonna be working and focusing on this week. I wanna keep it really simple and keep our learning goal focused on one task because again, they're only doing this for 20 minutes. So I don't wanna overwhelm them with like five different learning goals. I'm gonna keep it pretty focused on what it is that they need to do. This is also another great way to make sure if parents understand that there's a learning goal, then that means that if their child needs a bit more support, it's a little bit easier for them to go and find a additional materials that students can work on, stuff that fits that learning goal. So they can find a video or they can find worksheets that relate to that. To make sure that students can color code and see that it's just a different picture. I've particularly chosen the colors of some of the notebooks. Now I can add different shapes such as a call out. So if I want students to see something different, I can add different shapes, not always just boxes, but there's different standard shapes that are inside Google. So this call out is an interesting one. Now something else I might wanna do is add an image. So if I wanna add an image, I can go up to that picture frame and tell them that I want to search Google and I can do a Google image search right inside of my Google slide. So I can scroll down and select some of the images that can be used. And once I find one that I like, I can click on that image and then click insert and it will be inserted directly into my slide. And then I can simply just resize that image so that it fits with what I want. Sometimes using icons are a really great way to get students to focus on certain areas, especially if you've got kids that might not be so strong at reading the instructions, having an icon there is gonna be helpful for them.
Now, as you're formatting the different portions of the page, you can resize different text boxes, add different features, change things around, and it is a great way to be able to see different things. If you want them to go to a link, you can create a button that says press here and then attach the link. If you want them to insert a photo or a video of work they may have done at home, then you can simply provide a text box and have them give them a space for them to write over top of. If you want a text box for them to write inside, I like to put that in there and then make sure I put the text write your answer here so that students know what they want to answer. To create a new page, you can simply duplicate it and add different features. So for this page, I'm looking at creating a choice board for different questions for reading responses. And I wanna make sure that students have different options for them to write their text box. And I wanna make sure that the colors work. And then there is a ability for them to write their answers. Now I do like to have the answers being written directly in their own box so as not to confuse other ones. And again, to make new pages, I simply click duplicate and then change what I need to change. So for this, it would be the problem of the day. And then I have the different tasks that they are going to create. So I create a text box and then I'm going to put the different activities. So this is gonna be where they're going to have links for math and then for their math journal, different sections on what it is I want them to focus on because it's really gonna be this math journal page that I'm going to be marking and not some of their practice activities from the previous slide. I also want to create writing. So again, I've just duplicated another page, changed things up, changed the coding or the color code and different descriptions. Now this is going to be built on something that we did last week. So we are going to just structure information. So I will have a video for them to be watching. So just reorganizing the page as needed so that they have different information. And because they're writing three separate paragraphs, I'm going to just duplicate the same page and have them write the paragraph, each paragraph on a different, a different section of the slide. Now, when I wanna insert a video, I'm just going to go up to the top and write insert, and then I'm going to select insert video and copy the YouTube link, and then it will insert the video directly into the slide. And when I do that, the video will be attached right in the slideshow. Now students won't be able to view it when they're viewing the slide, but if students want to be able to view the video, they can click the present button in the top right hand corner of their screen. And when they hit present, they will be able to see the videos playing right within the slide. And then when they're ready to type their answers, they can stop the presentation and go ahead and edit and change the slide. I'm trying to limit the activities so that they're really only doing an activity that will be fairly quick for them to complete. And I wanna make sure that all of my learning goals are updated so I can update all of my learning goals, change it. Now the question is, how do you get it from your master out to your students. So what you're going to want to do is select file and then make a copy. And you have the option of choosing selected slides. So you select the slides that you wanna export and then save it as a separate file name. So in this case, I'm saving the reading file. So I'm gonna save it as week two reading. And I'm going to make sure that it's saved in my drive, not on my computer, because I do wanna share it into Google Classroom. So once that's ready, I can click okay. And now a new tab will be open on your browser. And from that tab, you will see that you've got a new slide, Google slide presentation with just the two slides that you'd pre-selected. These can then be added to your Google Classroom as a separate folder. So let's look at Google Classroom to see how that would look like. So next we're gonna go into Google Classroom and you'll notice that I've divided up that master into various subject areas and have added them as separate. So when you go into your Google Classroom, you can view assignment, and this is where students will be able to see their schedule of what it is they're supposed to do. So the other thing that you can do is if you have students that are on individual education plans, 
you can use Google Classroom and this method of using slides to modify and accommodate for them. So if you have a few students that are at a different grade level, you can take the slide and duplicate it and then change if the few expectations, change the learning goals, simplify some of the lessons, and then save that as a modified activity for math, then when you're back on Google Classroom, you can make a separate assignment for them and only assign it to those students. Sometimes you can also go in and write some accommodations. So if there's a few different formats in which a student could, instead of writing out their sentences, they could insert a video of themselves explaining their thinking, then you can write students comments and notes on the assignment, letting them know what their accommodations can be or alternate forms of uh, being able to share their knowledge with you. And that's all through uh, Google Classroom as well. I can put that in there. So I hope that you found tonight's video helpful as I walked you through how you could plan out your week's worth of digital lessons and then share it with your students on Google Classroom. Truth be told, I did speed up parts of this video, but it took me about an hour and a half to do all of those steps. So there was a few things that I still need to go back in and do, which probably add about another 30 minutes. So I'm looking through all in probably about two hours to plan an entire week's worth of lessons, which is pretty reasonable in my estimate. Even if you took three hours, that would still be a fairly reasonable investment of your time to create an entire week's worth of digital lesson plans. I'm not creating everything from scratch. I'm finding resources that are already there out there online for my students to participate in. And then when I'm able to do that and post that at the beginning of every week, it does free up my week to be able to answer questions and be a bit more responsive to students as they're in the moment of learning instead of constantly spending my time doing all of the planning. So I really want to focus on creating simple, easy to follow plans for my students that is the least overwhelming while still being able to accomplish some of our learning goals. And it is my hope that this has given you some ideas of how you could also plan digitally and be able to present that information to your students in a bit of a comprehensive way. If you have any other questions about different ways to teach digitally or how to use different resources or how to put things together, please feel free to drop it in the comments or send me a message. And I will make sure to put that on my list for upcoming videos because for the next couple of weeks or months, as long as we are social distancing and self-isolating, at home and teaching digitally, I'm going to flip the focus of our teaching with inquiry videos into how we can support teachers who are teaching digitally. So I also wanted to let you know there is a TPT sale. So if you have stuck around all the way to the end here with me, then I want you to head over to TPT. And if there are any resources that you need, you can get those now at about 25% off when you use the code and the code should be up there in the banner at the top when you are on the TPT site. So thank you so much for joining me and I can't wait to continue to work through this challenging time together. Bye for now.